to say that I had no idea there were going to be all these fucking gay people here. <laughs> I just got asked to do the show. I don't think I realized it was a gay show. Um, I'm sure you can tell by my Justin Bieber haircut that I swim in the lady pond. <laughs> So while my story is not particularly gay, I am. I, I have letters of reference, if you need that. <laughs> um, I got uh, a call from my mother a couple of weeks ago at about 7 in the morning. My mother still doesn't understand that she lives in a different time zone than me. <laughs> And that this job requires me to work nights. <laughs> so at 7 in the morning, my mother calls. An interview I had done was just published in a magazine. And she apparently got a hold of the magazine and was not happy with what the article said. <laughs> now let me go back and tell you that I'm not used to doing interviews. I'm sure you can tell I'm a hit. <laughs> and when I got a call from someone asking me questions about my life, I thought it would be cool to just be funny with them. <laughs> I'm a comedian. This is what I do. <laughs> so... The interviewer is asking me questions that I find kind of personal for an article about me being in an American Pie movie. <laughs> but I can tell this interviewer wants to get some kind of scoop, some kind of story, something that must have happened to me to make me be funny. Which I was like, yeah, uh, I grew up Jewish and gay, went to Catholic school in Louisiana. What fucking choice did I have? <laughs> me. This is how she starts the question. You know, a lot of humor is born of pain. <laughs> what do you think happened that made you become a comedian? So I say, <laughs> well, when I was younger, my mama used to hit me with a hot spatula and tell me how much she loved me. <laughs> movie's done wonders for me. You have no idea. <laughs> so, the doors are flying open. I mean, I'm here, right? This is some sort of very funny sauna. So, I, uh, I explained to my mother that, that while that she thinks that I'm blowing up. The reality of it is, is that I have, you know, thirteen dollars in my checking account, and I'm and I'm waiting on a residual check. <laughs> so, <laughs> my mother uh, is obviously very involved in what I do, and because my financial situation is not always that of someone who has accomplished all that I have accomplished. <laughs> my mother is attached to my banking account. Her name is on my banking account so that I can just call and say, Mama, could you put... <laughs> a little something <laughs> into 
in my bank account. And I always get her to put money in there by telling her I'm gonna buy new clothes to wear because she hates how I dress. So I'm like, Mama, I need some pants that fit me. And she's like, you do need some fucking pants that fit you. And she, so, so because she's attached to my bank account, she can see all of my transactions. All of them. So if I want to do anything kind of that I want her to know about, I have to pull out cash, right? And tell her that I was like, you know, at a store that only took cash. <laughs> so, it's very weird out here, Mom. So. Uh, sometimes, though, she and I miscommunicate, and the money doesn't get put in before I start spending it. So I was in Chicago uh, over a weekend, and my mom had gone to Baton Rouge to visit my little brother and his wife. And I had left her a message to... <laughs> put something in there. And uh, she, she didn't get the message in time. I assumed it got done and I went out to live my life. <laughs> I wasn't going crazy or anything, but you know, I like Starbucks, which my mother, my mother doesn't understand. Southern people don't, I can make my own fucking coffee. You know, she doesn't get that like, it's more delicious from the Starbucks. <laughs> so, that's what it's them. Probably because where I'm from, there's no fucking Starbucks. But, so she doesn't understand that charge. So I, I get a, uh, apparently what I did was in buying my coffee, I overdrew my bank account uh, with that one, one charge. And I got a phone call from my mother. Uh, it wasn't as early in the morning because I was in Chicago. So she calls and she says, uh, Jennifer, let me ask you something. Where are you right now? I said, Mom, I'm, I'm in Chicago. And what'd you do yesterday? <laughs> um, I went and met uh, Maureen, the girl I lived with in college. Remember, I went and met her uh, for some coffee. And then, um, I mean, I didn't, then I had a show. And let me, did you, what did what, what, what'd you pay for that coffee with? <laughs> well, I use, I use my, my, my debit card. Did you have money in that account, Jennifer? Well, I sent you that text message, remember? That said for you to... <laughs> <laughs> So she kind of read me for trash in front of my friend, and I couldn't in the middle of it be like, hang on, my mama, take your speaker, because she don't like to be on speaker at all, <laughs> right? That pisses her off. So I was already in trouble, so I just kind of let it go. But I was, I was mad at her for yelling at me so bad over just a cup of coffee. It wasn't my fault she didn't put the money <laughs> when I told her to. So I was going to get back my mother and the way I was going to get back at her was to do something that would really upset her. And my mother is very concerned with my physical safety. I don't know what she thinks is going to happen to me or she always tells me to make sure somebody walks me to my car so I don't get knocked in the head. <laughs> I don't know who's waiting to knock me in the head or if she thinks I have short hair now my head won't be protected. <laughs> 
she just doesn't, she's worried about it. So I wanted to do something very dangerous that would upset my mother. And so I signed up to go skydiving. Uh, it was a tandem jump. I didn't, I didn't know that word. They don't teach you that in public school in Louisiana. So I, I had to ask. Uh, and it, it means that you're strapped to someone else when you jump out of the airplane. And the fella I was uh, attached to was named Brad. Brad revealed to me in our little training session that he had been a cheerleader in college. <laughs> and he was real excited that I was doing this with him. And the whole, the kind of selling point of this skydiving lesson was that you got to pull the ripcord. This is like when he keeps saying, you get to pull the cord. You get to, I'm like, I don't fuck, I'm not even jumping. Like, I'm attached to you. You pull the fucking cord. <laughs> but it was a big deal that I got to pull the cord. He's like, you pull the cord and you get to feel it. And remember that right when you pull that cord, a few seconds, it's going gonna, it's gonna to grab us and we're going to And we had, when you landed, you had to roll with it, okay, to keep from hurting yourself. I mean, I imagine you're falling out of a plane. That... <laughs> So, uh, and I'm, I'm very good at the rolling, being a circular person. So, <laughs> I was prepared uh, for the whole thing. And I, when I got up there, and, you know, they opened that door, you realize, oh, fuck. <laughs> We're really about to jump out of a plane. Like, in my head, it was okay, because it was happening to piss my mom off. But now, I'm strapped to fucking Brad. <laughs> And there's an open plane door. <laughs> and I guess, really, I would have backed out at that point, honestly. I would have been like, you know what? I don't want to upset my mother. I'm just going to sit this one out. But I'm strapped to Brad, who wants to fucking jump. <laughs> so he looks at me with the, he's so happy. I don't want to disappoint Brad. <laughs> So he's like, are you ready? We're going to jump. Don't you forget, when I give you the signal, you hit the ripcord. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready. This is it. It's going down. We jump out of the plane. Brad jumps out of the plane. I, I just go with him. I don't have a choice at this point. So we jump out of the plane. And he, we are free falling. Uh, my ass became a wind sock <laughs> and the air went ah! it was unfucking believable I've never ever felt that before up your ass okay boys I don't know how you do it I don't know how you do it I wasn't prepared but it was very exhilarating and, and, and pretty you can't do anything but go with it it's fucking happening so he gives me the signal, and I pull the cord, and nothing happens. And I see Brad smile. Wash off of his face. And change to a look of panic. Now they told us that there is a safe Shoot, a second one. But you gotta be way fucking lower because apparently it's made out of paper or something. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be much closer to the ground <laughs> to pull that shoot. And as we're falling from the sky, all I'm figuring out in my head is how we're gonna land with this motherfucker beneath me. <laughs> some huevos rancheros at Taco Burrito Palace number two. And uh, 
as we're falling from the sky, this is where those uh, Quavos make a second appearance in the story. <laughs> you, when, you, when you jump out of the plane, a guy with a camera jumps at the same time as you to make a video of you. And you can just see it hit the camera. <laughs>